Welcome back to the Dark Reading News Desk at RSA. Terry Sweeney here with Dark Reading, and joining me now is Sanjay Jayakumar, CTO and co-founder of Abnormal Security. Sanjay, thanks for joining us on the Dark Reading News Desk. Of course. Thank you so much, Sherry, for having me. We are talking about uh, AI-powered account takeover protection, um, but um, uh, let's, let's start with a little bit of context. Uh, I, I think we can agree that email is probably most companies' biggest exposure point, threat vector, however you want to characterize it. Um, it seems to be a conduit for just all the big attacks, whether ransomware, business email compromise, those sorts of things. Um, while it's tempting and maybe easy to blame users who are rushing through their day or just not, not thinking, um, I'd like to try to approach this from the perspective of the attackers. Like, what is it about this medium that, that makes it so attractive as a, as a target for cyber attackers? Yeah, that's a really good prompt there, Terry. What we are seeing is that there is a variety of different things that have shifted. First off, we're using cloud platforms like Microsoft and G Suite. Also, what's happened past COVID is everyone's working from home and on the go. Users have multiple devices, so mobile devices, it's very hard to sort of see who the sender is. And add on to that, ChatGPT. You've given basically the best language model to threat actors along the world. So petty criminals can write better emails than I can. <laughs> so you can't hold, yeah. you know, you could put it on the users. It, well, it, it, the, the vulnerability has only increased with the advent of, uh, of chat GP, well, of generative AI generally. Um, but no, I think you make a good point as well. Um, during COVID and now allegedly post-COVID, the, the attack surface, uh, it's not just a single desktop device. Like, we, we each have multiple devices. And who doesn't do work stuff on their personal device? I mean, this is, this is a common practice, no? This is uh, very common, and we have multiple devices. And on these multiple devices, it's getting harder to see who the email is coming from. And you can't really train an employee to go and say, go and look at the SPF DKIM and the DMARC. And guess what? What's also happening is because of the uh, bounty or the, uh, what the threat actors are going for, the value of that increasing, they're going after the supply chain as well. So they are compromising vendors who don't have the best of security to get into these ecosystems. And that last bit is a little surprising, but we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for another time. Um, business email compromise and a, a account takeovers are, are problems for companies of all sizes. It doesn't seem to discriminate. Um, can you just fill in sort of the, 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 the finer details of, of that problem there with um, just why these continue to be issues with, I mean, email is like, again, to come back to this, one of the, the oldest business tools yeah. that we have. Um, it, it's a little shocking that it still is this, this, this gaping hole in an otherwise you know, iron wall of security, right? Yeah, it's 2024 and we're talking about email security. It's kind of strange, right? Um, the resurgence of email and email security is primarily because all of these email attacks are now uh, content-based. So what do I mean? There's no payload like a link or an attachment to go and fingerprint. So if Microsoft or Google were to see a bad link once, they'll stop it a million times over. But these attacks are never before seen because it's content-based. It's an actual threat actor on the other side, social engineering their way in. That, and those are the traits of business email compromise. In terms of account takeover, which leads to IT access, which in some cases is getting escalated to ransomware, um, it's the same type of traits, never before seen attacks because threat actors can go and set up, set up payloads and web domains um, across the web and it's just much easier now. Uh, so Abnormal Security unveiled a, a product this week that expands email security into other applications and to protect against account takeovers. Tell us about some of the key features and why you decided to loop in related applications to the protection umbrella. Yeah, we feel a deep onus and responsibility to our customers to really partner with them to stop phishing breaches. We're here to stop their phishing breaches. So that starts with shutting the wide open front door in email. But then there's multiple different w windows into the ecosystem. It's Microsoft 365 itself because there's enterprise applications that can be installed or access through Slack Team Zoom or ServiceNow Salesforce Workday or AWS Azure and GCP. So our customers came to us and said, we need one single pane of glass that provides visibility 
protection as well as detection. And we do all of that across all of these ecosystems. So does that take you into dealing with the, the access and authentication data that's behind that and, and invisible to users, but, but obviously what the attackers are going for? Is that, is that sort of the, where you've pinpointed? Yeah, that's exactly right. So what we do is we use the API architecture to plug right into the platforms and ecosystems. Using the API architecture, we can build out a human behavioral model for each person to say, John's norms are he usually logs in from San Francisco. He usually uses a MacBook. He usually comes in with these types of parameters. So now that we know who John is across all of these ecosystems, when we see John doing an access or a sign in, we can go and say, hey, is that normal? Is that suspicious or risky? Is it something where we've seen some scattered spider activity, for example, mm. from? So we are using those two dimensions of suspiciousness as well as normalcy to go and score every event that's happening in our enterprise event ecosystem. Excellent. Um, tell us some more about um, Abnormal's complete account takeover protection. What, what should customers expect there? They should, I'm very excited about launching that because that is one of the very few products even in our RSA this year to be able to stop against the Uber breach, uh, the unfortunate incidents at MGM Caesars, and we don't know too much about this, but the United Healthcare incident as well. Mm -hmm. What are threat actors doing in? They're not hacking in using zero days. They're simply logging in. They're using our own employees against ours. Um, they're social engineering their way in. And so when they social engineer their way in, they get IT access. They're getting past MFA. Once they get IT access, that's where we feel a real onus and responsibility to ensure that we have complete visibility across the entire ecosystem, looking to see if there are any abnormal logins, sign-ins, accesses, and if it's suspicious and risky from a threat intel perspective. And so we would go and detect and automatically remediate all of those events. So then that prevents the threat actor from going and escalating it into something more malicious like ransomware. Okay, and, and in terms of where the protection software actually resides, is that a, is that a cloud-based function? Is that just something that goes on uh, a, a customer company's email servers? How, how does that part work? We are a cloud-native SaaS platform, and so the really nice thing about this for customers is that it takes five minutes to integrate all the platforms, and literally from that point, the platform is up and ready. The system goes backward in time, builds out a norms for every employee in the ecosystem, and from there, it can go about detecting and remediating. The thing that customers really love about us is that they can integrate, the platform learns, there's no config that's required, and then the system is up and running. All right. Um, Sanjay, let's, let's go out with your, your thoughts on some of the biggest challenges that security leaders um, are going to be up against in the coming months. Um, as, as you look in your crystal ball, um, what's, what's there and how can security professionals begin to prepare? Yeah, but that's a very good question. So the job of security is only getting harder and harder. Why is that? It's because of this distributed ecosystem that we are in. All our employees are now working from coffee shops, especially through COVID. Everyone's working from home. It's much more distributed. The second dimension that's going in is the fact that every month we're adding a new cloud or a SaaS platform into our ecosystem. Most of our co companies, 200 to 500 apps is not an anomaly, right? 200 to 500 apps in our IT ecosystem. And we're supposed to, from the security perspective, go and secure all of that. And we have the onus and responsibility to go and secure that. That's a large amount of responsibility. And then against this, we have a threat actor ecosystem with Gen AI. Imagine we only have ChatGPT4. What happens when we have ChatGPT7 and the capabilities are much, much more? We're giving petty criminals the ability to do nation state type attacks. Yeah. And so that's what we're facing. And we need AI to stop these AI based attacks. And that's what we hope to be partnering with our customers on. All right. Well, uh, you, you've, you've got me thinking much differently about business email compromise and email generally, um, and uh, I'm, I'm sure our listeners as well. Um, Sanjay, thank you so much for doing the Dark Reading News Desk today. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, we've been talking with Sanjay J. Yukumar from Abnormal Security. This has been Terry Sweeney for the Dark Reading News Desk. Thanks for joining us for this segment. We'll see you next time.